everybody, it's Thursday, and you guys have joined another Mic Talk. Thank you so much for being here with me. I'm unnecessarily alive and awake this morning early, uh, just because I couldn't sleep last night, and you know how that sometimes goes. But God bless you guys. Thank you guys for joining me. Another sip of coffee before we move on. Uh, I want to encourage you um, to pray with us every day at 149. Remember Psalm 149, verse 6 is where we get the song and sword um, tagline from, and it is with the high praises of God in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands. It is the picture of the battle that's on. Evil is against us. We have two-edged swords, the Word of God. And, uh, but we also sing a song of grace, and this week we're talking about singing. I want to show you this. Uh, 149 p.m. every day. It's on my phone to remind me, Psalm 149, to pray at 149 for Song and Sword Church. Would you join us? Would you be a part of this movement of prayer? Just take a minute or two every day and say, Lord, use Song and Sword in a powerful way. Uh, bless Mike and Sarah as they lead this. Bless our volunteers. Bless our lead team as they help um, move forward. Find us a place where we can call home in a more permanent way. By the way, we don't have a permanent home now, but we've got a cool place at the Chateau in Bloomington, 9 and 10.30 a.m. every Sunday. You can see it there. And uh, we'd love to have you guys be a part of that. Um, also, if you need prayer, text prayer to that number that pops up on the screen there. And we'll pray for you. We continue to do that. So, um, hope you guys are well. And we're going to get into it. We're going to continue talking about singing today. You ever wonder why churches sing? When you go to a church service, why is there singing? What is the purpose of that? And there's actually two really, really strong verses in the New Testament. Ephesians uh, 4.19. In this, in this passage, I'm going to read to the church in Colossae, uh, the Colossian letter, in 3.16. Here's what it says about singing. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your heart to God. That same, that same formula there Paul uses in the Ephesian uh, church letter where he says psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. And uh, so that, that lets us know that in the first ser- uh, church, Paul was encouraging them to sing the psalms that would be pretty natural because Christianity came out of the Jewish world. So the psalms, and they would be carried on, believe it or not. You know, David wrote psalms a thousand years before the church sang them. But as we started identifying, as Jesus started helping identify the psalms being about Jesus, it would be natural for the church to sing songs, and so we do today. We sing, some, uh, we sing words from psalms today in, in the churches. Then there are hymns. A hymn is just a sacred song, right? Um, and they were probably had hymns that were just choruses that they sang outside of the psalms. And then there's this thing called spiritual songs. You ever wonder, because um, if you're like me, you grew up with hymns. And uh, if, you're, if you're not old school, if you're not 1900s church, and before that, you don't remember that we had hymn books that were, you know, probably three pages, there were 300 songs in a, in a hymn book. And we sang those songs pretty much only. <laughs> Unless we went to church camp and somebody had a guitar and we would, play, we would sing some choruses and stuff. But... The, the, the point is, is that everything is good for doing what Paul's trying to accomplish here. Whether it's a psalm, whether it's a hymn, whether it's a spiritual song, you know, all the new stuff that's being written now, some people don't like it, it's too repetitive, there's a lot of reasons that older people don't like the spiritual songs that come out all the time. But as long as they line up with Scripture, and in fact, that's the most important thing here that I want to encourage you with. In Ephesians 5, uh, 19, it says to, um, to speak to one another or address one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. In other words, when we sing songs about Jesus, we, we speak to one another. But here it gets even more specific in 316. It says teaching and admonishing one another. In other words, we teach each other about Jesus Christ. I said it last week in our, in our worship services. Um, this is a testimony. We testify about who Jesus is when we sing about him. You know, holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty is a testimony that he is who he is, right? Um, he's broken every chain. Is a testimony to what Jesus has done in our life. I can go on and on, but these lyrics should, number one, point to Jesus, and then they should teach us, 
admonish us, which is to remind us, even sometimes in a really, you know, uh, like a parent to a child, no, you got to do this, and admonishes us, and it also, we speak to one another in these songs. So the songs really are an integral part of the church. And um, I would just encourage you to come this Sunday to the Chateau at 9 or 1030 so we can sing together. We still don't have a worship leader, but you know what? That doesn't matter. We still address one another. We speak to each other and we encourage and teach each other with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. So sing some of those today and sing them in company with others so that you can proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. Isn't that cool? Songs are not just songs we sing. It's not just a thing we do at church really has a spiritual meaning. Love you guys. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace.